Hello, my name is Mike Gallagher. I'm a consulting systems engineer at HPE Aruba Networking. In this series of videos, I'm going to talk about EST on HPE Aruba Networking equipment. I'm going to provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to configure it on HPE Aruba Networking CX switches and AOS 10 gateways. We're going to utilize ClearPass Onboard as our EST server and our certificate authority. What is our agenda for this series of videos? First of all, let's explain what EST is, what I need from a component perspective to be able to use EST, what are some good use cases for a network engineer, right? Um, I have my networking equipment, why do I need to use EST? And then we'll get into how to configure um, EST uh, with that select uh, Aruba networking equipment. We'll demonstrate how to configure ClearPass as the EST server and certificate authority, and then we'll demonstrate how to configure um, EST enrollment on CX switches, AOS 10 gateways. Okay, so first, what is EST? Mm -hmm. EST is short for enrollment over secure transport. It's defined in RFC 7030. So if you would like some additional details about how EST works, please refer to that RFC. Simply stated though, it's a protocol that, be, that can be used to install PKI certificates on devices. Many networking devices these days support EST and it's really just a way to automate certificate installation on your network infrastructure devices. The EST process use, utilizes HTTPS, so TLS over HTTP. It's much easier to use than legacy protocols such as SCEP. In fact, it was designed as a protocol to replace SCEP. Why can't I just manually install certs on my network devices? You absolutely can do that if you want. You can manually generate CSRs. You can submit that to your certificate authority for a certificate, and then you can manually install that certificate on your device. That's perfectly fine. However, even if you have tens, but especially if you have hundreds or even thousands of these network devices that need certificates, that can be a very kind time consuming task. You also have to remember that certs expire. So this isn't just a one and done process. Many uh, corporations may have security policies that only allows for certificates to be valid for one year. You certainly don't wanna be doing a manual process um, such as installing certificates on thousands of networking devices every year. What are the components of EST? Pretty straightforward. A device that needs a cert. You're not going to use EST if you don't need a cert. That could be a switch, that could be a gateway, that could be an access point, that could be a firewall, anything. You need an EST server, right? So something that speaks EST. In our case, we're going to use ClearPass Policy Manager onboard for that. You need a certificate authority, something that's going to generate and cut the certificates on behalf of the EST server request. In our case, again, we're going to use ClearPass Policy Manager on board for that purpose. How does EST work at a very high level? Well, we have our device. It needs a certificate. It starts its EST request over HTTPS, as we explained previously, over to ClearPass onboard EST server. EST server responds with its HTTPS certificate change chain. EST device says, OK. I trust you, I'll generate my CSR, supply my credentials to you, and request a certificate. ClearPass onboard says, or your EST server in general says, okay, your credentials look good to me. I'm gonna forward your request over to the your certificate authority, which in this case is ClearPass onboard. ClearPass onboard or your certificate authority in general generates that device certificate passes it off to the EST server, which is which then presents it to the EST device. Now, let's go back to one of the initial steps. How does the EST device know to trust the ClearPass certificate chain? Well, the device does need to have the root cert of the EST server's HTTPS cert chain preloaded into the device. If there's intermediates involved, that's fine, but you only need to install the root cert of the CA that signed your EST server's HTTPS cert. 
This can be a little confusing because in our case, ClearPass is involved in everything. There's a lot of certs in play here, right? But is the HTTPS cert of ClearPass the same one that you would see if you did, uh, browsed to ClearPass for administration? That's the web cert we're talking about. That's the HTTPS cert we're talking about. The root of who signed that needs to be trusted on the EST device. What can I do with this cert? Well, it can be used for anything on that cert, uh, on that device, right? Um, that needs a cert. Yeah, it could be HTTPS, could be RADSEC, might be RADSEC, could even be RADSEC. And did I mention RADSEC? So next, let's go ahead and build the EST server and certificate authority for EST in ClearPass Onboard. In this section, we're going to build an EST server and certificate authority for EST in ClearPass Onboard. The tasks are going to be to create a new certificate authority in ClearPass Onboard and enable EST within that CA. We're going to generate a username. You can generate more if you'd like for devices to use for their credentials when they enroll. We're also going to create a service in ClearPass Policy Manager for EST device enrollment authorization. Let's move over to ClearPass real quick. I'm going to log in with my credentials. And before we move on to onboard, I want to take a minute to take a look at the web certificate that's being used on this ClearPass instant instance, and we'll see the uh, this certificate was issued by the Certificate Authority. Now, there's no intermediates here. Uh, this is my lab um, Windows Certificate Authority. It is um, the root. There's no intermediates involved here. So when we configure um, EST enrollment in switches and um, AOS 10 gateways, um, this is the cert we're going to need because it's the it is indeed the the root of who in, who signed the web certificate for this ClearPass node. Okay, first thing we're going to jump over to ClearPass onboard. This does require a ClearPass onboard license. So I'm going to select ClearPass onboard. It's going to take me over to my ClearPass onboard um, management interface. Let's real quick look at the certificate authorities I already have installed. And I already have a, a, an onboard um, EST um ca um configured here uh, but we're going to do a new one um, this particular one um, i configured as an intermediate um, it's just an extra step that if you if your organization already has their own certificate authority and you want clear pass um, even for est to be a subordinate to that you can simply configure your certificate authority as an intermediate you'll be um, presented an opportunity to download the CSR, send that to your certificate authority, have a CA certificate um, generated, and then you can install that and um, you will be able to use the certificate authority as an intermediate. There's really no difference from a EST enrollment perspective, whether you make your CA a root or if you make an intermediate, it's really who is authoritative for, for that certificate authority. So we're gonna create a new certificate authority here. And this is where you're presented options of whether it's its own root or an intermediate. You can also do imported or, or just a registration authority. We're gonna do root. So no one's going to be intermediate to um, this certificate authority. But again, if you wanted to make this intermediate, you would select this option. But we're gonna do this. We're gonna do root CA. Um, um, just this is just a name um, that you will see in the CA list. So I'm going to call it um, Clear Pass EST CA. You can put a description in if you want. Again, I said root CA. Since this is a certificate authority, you do have to um, uh, go through basically the um, certificate. Um, registration process, it's going to generate its own. I'm just going to leave all this de de default. You have to put in what you want to. As a common name, I'm going to call it um, ClearPass Demo EST. Assigning name, I'm going to say ClearPass Demo 
EST, fill out your own um, email address, set the key type. I'm going to bump it up to 4096. This is the expiration of this CA's root certificate and the digest algorithm. We're going to leave that as SHA-12 and approximately 10 years. Okay, I'm going to create that certificate authority. Once that's done, you're going to see it show up right here, clear pass ESTCA. It's root, it's valid, it expires in 2034. This is something that um, is generated automatically for every certificate authority. You'll notice there's a number at the end of this that is basically the number um, that's assigned um, in order as you um, create certificate authorities on your onboard instance. So the local certificate authority, that's one that's there by default. You can see that's number one. I created another one that was number two, and then I had number three, number four, must have gotten deleted. Um, but when I created this one, it's five. This is important to notice. This this five will, will come up um, in, um, in, a, in, in the EST uh, portion as well. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this real quick. So I created it, but now I need to um, enable EST and change a couple minor parameters, okay? First thing is what you would like your validity period to be for the certificate this CA generates, okay? Back in the previous step, it was 3653, which is approximately 10 years. That's for the root CA's cert itself. This validity period is for your certs that you're going to um, generate by EST or, or other means. Okay. I'm going to leave a default of one year. Clock skew and out, um, uh, allowance. I'm going to leave that as, as, as 15 minutes. I'm going to leave this default. Digest algorithm. I'm going to leave that as default. I'm going to keep a copy of all of these. And I'm going to keep a copy um, for uh, one year for expired or even rejected requests, okay? So that I'm leaving all, de all default here. Now, how do we enable EST? Click that checkbox, okay? It's not much else to it, but we also have to say, how do we want our clients to authenticate? You can do a shared secret. Um, that would be um, probably not the best because if you do, if that shared secret does get out, um, you're you're basically going to have to to change that and make sure it's unique on every single um, device. Uh, yeah. You're going to have to create another one and, and put it on all your devices. HTTP Basic or Digest authentication is is a little bit better, um, and that's going to utilize accounts within ClearPass Guest. You can create as many as you want, um, and you can have one per device if you want. Um, uh, so it make, makes it a little more secure. So if one gets compromised. Um, you could you could delete that and generate a new one. Okay, we're going to make the EST key type to our forty nine six RSA, and that is essentially it. Now, one thing I want to point out here is this is the enrollment URL. And you'll see the number five came back into view here, right? So these this is a well known. Um, uh, a format for EST enrollment right here. Okay. We're going to change that a little bit when we put on, when we put this on our, our devices. Um, I set my host name in ClearPass to be um, ClearPass uh, A and not uh, fully qualified. So we're going to have to modify that just a little bit. All right. But we're going to take note of that. Um, one thing I did neglect to say is I do want to include the OSP responder um, URL in um, in these certificates. So with the certificates themselves um, are generated, the OSP, OCSP URL is in there. And what we can do, little trick, is we can just make this localhost. So when ClearPass checks uh, the uh, OCSP URL it's itself, um, so you can just say localhost. So when the OC, when ClearPass says, I need to check um, the, the validity of a certificate that's being presented to me from a switch or whatever it might be, um, it knows that it can just look at itself. All right, so we'll change that to local host. Okay, so that is it. So summarize, we change this to specify, made this local host, kept this default, this default, this default, this default, this default, this default. I enabled EST, I changed this to basic or digest. 
and that's uh, and then I um, upped the key type to 4096. Okay, I'm going to save those changes. So they're done. Now, let's create a guest account that I can use for my um, devices for EST um, enrollment. So look, I already created one in here. It's called Switch Reg, but I'm going to do another one. I'm going to so I'm in ClearPass Guest. I'm going to create an account, and I am going to call this BS. T in role. So that's my account. I have to fill out a company name because that's what's in my form. So you can just put whatever you want. Email address. Activate it now. Now watch the expiration. Don't want to, you want to make sure this is not one day from now, you're going to be able to use these credentials on switches tomorrow. So we'll just say they don't expire. The role doesn't matter. Password is default here. Uh, we can change that in a minute. So I'm going to go to create. I now have um, the guest username of EST enroll at xyz.com. And I have the password there, but I want to change that password. So I'm going to go to manage accounts and I'm going to reset the password. Oh, sorry, I am going to edit the password. Okay, I'm going to type a new one in. So I went to edit, don't go to reset password, go to edit, I'm going to type in a new password and I'm going to name that password EST with Aruba, BST with Aruba, okay? And I also set the session limit to zero. That way, uh, an unlimited amount of devices could use this credential if I wanted to, all right? So we're gonna update that and that's ready to go. So that's my username and that's my password. Have that ready for use. Um, in your switches when we get to the when these we get to the switch and the um, AOS 10 gateway uh, portion. Okay. Now, last step, I need to go back to ClearPass Policy Manager. So, what happens in this process is when a device does an EST request, those credentials are presented, and an authorization happens. So, ClearPass onboard, which is inside ClearPass Policy Manager reaches out to policy, ClearPass Policy Manager and says, hey, um, is, is, are the, is, this, is this guy good, All right? So we have to create a service for that. And we created a Aruba application authentication service for that. You see, I already created one. Let's review it real quick. I'm gonna create a new one just so you know how to use it um, or how to configure it by default. But you can see, I named this EST enrollment. The authenticate, it is a um, Aruba auth application authentication, okay? And the only thing we really need to do when we create this in, in, in the next steps is we need to make sure the um, application name equals EST, right? So that's the application within ClearPass um, Onboard that reaches the ClearPass Policy Manager, okay? So it, it doesn't match on that. The authentication can be anything. Put whatever authentication source you want in there. This is really just an authorization. You can do role mapping if you want to, but you can also do an enforcement if you want. But I, I'm basically just saying, you know, it is I'm allowing everything, right? So as long as it's a day of the week, which I certainly hope it is, um, these are every EST enrollment ch authorization check is going to pass. So, so this is more of a formality, but. Let me go through and, and show you how to add one of those. I'm actually going to disable mine. Um, so, so this one is used. So when you go to create it, we're going to do application authentication template. Okay. And I'm going to call it new EST in. Okay. And again, here's the, this is generated by a template. So all I need to do is say equals EST. And it's already there. Okay. I hit save. Okay, my authentication, uh, I'm gonna pick anything, I'm gonna pick that. My role mappings, I'm not gonna do any role mappings and my enforcement, I'm just gonna leave this alone. 
um, because basically I don't, I'm not going to put any um, real authorization on there. It's just as, as long as it's the day of the week, right? And that's all I have to do when I hit save. Now notice I did not, when I went through this, I did not select um, authorization here because uh, it's, um, I'm not, um, using another authorization source. So I don't have to specify that. Okay. So I'm going to hit save. All right. And then you'll see this new EST enroll is there and ready to go. I can reorder it, click on that and move it up to that position there. Oops. It's in there. All right. So that's that. My other one's disabled. So it really doesn't matter what what order it's in, but it is there and ready to go. That completes the clear pass configuration portion of EST. Okay, let's configure um, EST on an Aruba CX6300. This was first supported in CX code 10.6. So you can go back pretty far um, and, and have this be supported. Um, so here's here's our tasks. First, we're going to import the ClearPass HPSCA root cert that we that I talked about quite a few times before. The commands for that is crypto PKITA profile, and you name it. I'm going to call it Win 2019 because that's the server that that signed that certificate. Next, you type in TA cert certificate. So you're saying this is a trust anchor certificate, and then you're going to paste that in and get instructions on on how to um, uh, finish that um, installation when you do that. You do need to make sure you have the certificate in base64 format. So have that ready before you start this. And we're going to create an enrollment profile. The command is crypto PKI EST profile and then you name it. I'm calling it EST enroll. VRF, I specify as default because it's the only one I have. So that's the one I'm using. If you're using a different VRF for EST communications, make sure you specify that. The URL, this is kind of unique. Um, to Aruba CX is the URL uh, um, uh, format is fully qualified. So you have to specify HPS colon, the server name, slash dot well dash known ESTCA file, right? You have to specify all of that. You'll see when in, in a, probably most networking devices don't use this entire string, as you'll see when we do the AOS 10 gateway, but that is how we do it on a CX switch. And we specify the username that, so this is the guest account we created in the last um, section, right? EST enroll, password, plain text, EST with Aruba, write mem that goes away and that becomes um, uh, encrypted. Next thing I'm gonna do is create a leaf cert on the CX switch and I'm going to uh, name it, right? So I said crypto PKI certificate and the name I'm calling it EST cert. The only thing I specify, um, uh, to be used in the um, in enrollment process and the certificate request process is a common name. If you hit, um, if you type uh, crypto PKI certificate EST cert and then enter that and hit question mark, you'll see all the other options. You can even have pretty much the standard certificate things. Then you have to specify that you want to use EST to get to 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 request the certificate. So you use enroll. EST desk profile, and then the profile you want it to use to get the certificate. So EST dash enroll. Um, CX switches, I think, support up to 16 EST profiles. So uh, if you had a use case for, for getting multiple certificates from multiple EST um, servers, or, or you, you have that, you have that flexibility. A um, couple tips. First, configure NTP on ClearPass and the switch. Make sure time is in sync. Configure a DNS server on the switch. You need to be able to make sure you can resolve your um, EST servers um, uh, FKDN, right? And if you don't have a DNS server that can resolve that, um, you can put a static entry in the switch, right? So kind of two options there. And then make sure the clear pass hosting is, is resolvable, right? Either by DNS or your static hosting. All right, so let's now move over to the switch, okay? I have my Aruba 6300 here. And first, let's check the version, right? I'm, I'm running 10.9, but again, this is supported from 10.6 on, okay? So I'm going to um, first show, show some things. Let's, let's take a look at the clock. 
It is Friday, June 14th at 1943, which is correct. Okay. And let me make sure I can resolve my EST server domain name. And I can. Okay. So my DNS server is configured. I can show, show run pipe, include DNS, and you can see it right here. So that is all configured. So I should be pretty much ready to go. So let's go through our tasks. I am going to um, install the trust anchor. So that is this, the certificate uh, that for the HTTPS CA. This is what I'm pasting in, all right, TA certificate. And then I hit return. Now it's giving me instructions here, paste certificate in PEM format, then hit enter and control D. So I am going to grab the certificate in B64 format, and there's already an enter in uh, my, my pasting, so I won't have to do that. But make sure you have the begin certificate and end certificate, the whole thing in there, okay? And then what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Control B. Do you want to save that or import it? Yes, I do. It's ready to go. Exit out if you're all the way. Do write mem. Anybody old enough to remember write mem? Cheers. Now we do a write a show run, and we can see my TA profiles in there and certificates in there. Okay, next step. Let's create the enrollment profile. And I already showed the commands for that last time. So I'm going to go ahead and T, paste that in there. All done, right? Control Z out of there, right? Okay, so now I have my enrollment profile, so information to be able to um, get that certificate. Okay, next, let's create the leaf cert. Okay, enroll, EST profile, EST dash enroll. Okay, do I want to continue? Yep, sure do. Okay, cool. Control Z, right, ma'am. Now, let's take a look. Should have done probably by that show. Crypto PKI certificates. There it is. EST certificate. Enrollment success. These first two are factory default. So if I did this before I did the enrollment, you would have seen them there. You would not have seen EST cert, but let's take a look at it. So if I do show... Bride, PKI, ES, whoops, certificate, EST, cert. There it is. Everything's in there. The CN um, is in there that I specified. Again, it's the only thing um, I specified. So you'll see the entire certificate right here. Okay. So that is all done. Okay, here's the URL. It's that's um, for the for OCSP. Someone's presented. It's uh, ClearPass can just use localhost there, and we should be good to go. Now, let's take a look at what what happened over in ClearPass. All right, so we have ClearPass here. Look what happened. Yeah, I did a dry run here. Forget that one. But this most recent one at 1945 which just happened. Here's that authorization that happened. Remember that application um, service, uh, uh, application authentication service that we created. Well, here's the result of that, All right? The username, it was from C, it came from CA5. There's the username that was created, the timestamps and all that stuff. And basically it was allowed, right? I didn't do anything um, special from an authorization perspective. So as long as your username and password was correct, then um, the enrollment um, would would pass authentication. Let's take a look over in in ClearPass. So um, on, in onboard, I can take a look at all the certificates that were created. Um, just a hint: if you change your certificate type from the default of all, change it to TLS, and you'll you'll get a shorter list, right? So here is the certificate that got created. Remember, there's that's the common name I specified when I created the leaf cert. It's valid from today, which is June 14th, 2024, it's valid for one year. And if we view the certificate, remember I did specify the common name and it's right there. The rest of it, you can take a look at, but now this certificate is ready to go for um, use for RADSEC, which is probably the most common use when we use EST is to get certificates on for RADSEC. All right, so we're gonna show the RADSEC configuration on, on the switch 
next and, and watch that come up, okay? Okay, let's configure a Aruba CX6300 for RADSEC. So there's some um, uh, prerequisites that I'm gonna talk about actually kind of second, but I'm gonna talk about the configuration tasks on the 6300 and on ClearPass and I'm gonna go over the gotchas and the caveats because there's some gotchas um, that, that, that are often forgotten um, when at least initially setting up RADSEC for the very first time on, on clear pass or switch. So the first things we need to do on the switch is we need to tell the switch to use a specific certificate for its function of being a RADSEC client. So, and we want to make sure we use the certificate that was used in the EST enrollment. Okay. So that's EST cert. Remember, we called it EST cert. If you don't specify this, it's going to use a factory default one and it's not going to work, right? So we have to make sure we, we do EST cert, okay? So we're saying crypto PKI application. If you hit question mark there, you'll see all the other options too, like HTTPS and things like that. You specify specific certs for those. Um, but for, for RADSEC, you say RADSEC client certificate EST cert, okay? And then to enable um, RADSEC, it's basically like configuring any other radius server, except we add TLS at the end. But what we also want to make sure of is we're using the FQDN of the radius server. Now I'm throwing a little bit of a curveball at you. Um, and I guess it can be a little confusing because we're using ClearPass for everything, but kind of forget about the EST part at this point and the URLs that were used. I, I do have a VIP configured and a publisher subscriber. The subscriber's down right now, but I do have a VIP configured on my ClearPass publisher subscriber. That VIP resolves um, from clearpass.mjglab.com. So if you remember, I used clearpassa.mjglab.com for the EST enrollment. Forget about that. We're going to point the radius server to the VIP. Now, the other one thing you really have to watch for is this host name must match the CN of my rate my radius server's RADSEC certificate. I'll show you that in a second. So clearpassmgg.lab.com matches the RADSEC cert on ClearPass matches its CN. The next two are optional, but I am going to enable COA. So I say radius dynamic authorization enable, radius dynamic authorization client, same, same thing with TLS. On ClearPass, I need to configure the switch in the device list and enable RADSEC, pretty straightforward. But one thing that almost always gets forgotten, and you only ever do this once, so it's not something everybody does all the time. You, know, you, you did it three years ago and you totally forgot you did it. And you try to do it again and you, you don't remember. But you have to enable the RADSEC extended key usage on the, um, the, on the root CA that signed your switches, your network infrastructures, CA um, or RADSEC cert. In, in our case, that's the EST CA's root cert. So, so that the EST CA that we created, that's the root, right? Um, because we did not make an intermediary. That's the root, right? That signed my switch CA, uh, my switch's RADSEC client cert. If you don't have RADSEC EKU enabled on that cert, the ClearPass will fail the validation of your 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 your, your network access devices RADSEC certs. So we'll go over this in in a minute. Okay, here's here's a caveat. There are some prerequisites, and I want to want to go over this. Make sure everybody understands it. For an a, for RADSEC to work, both the RADSEC server and the switch must trust the root CA that signed each other's RADSEC cert. Okay. Now we're kind of lucking out a little bit because we used um, ClearPass as um, the the EST um, and and e and the the CA for uh, um, in, in uh, generating those certificates. So 
so ClearPass already has the root CA in our case installed in its trust list. So it already trusts the RADSEC client's uh, root CA. You just have to enable the RADSEC EKU on it. So we kind of have that. If I did an intermediary, uh, or let me put it another way, if I created the CA for EST in ClearPass as an intermediary, I would have to make sure that um, the root is in the trust list, which it would be, you would have already done that, but you also have to make sure that the RADSEC EKU is enabled on that cert, okay? On the switch, we also have to make sure the switch trusts the root CA that signed the other's RADSEC cert. And in my case, kind of make it a little easy, because the same CA that signed the HTTPS cert signed the RADSEC cert, so already have that loaded in there, that win 2019. But if it was a different server, if it was a different CA that signed the RADSEC cert on ClearPass, I would have to make sure I loaded that as another um, TA um, profile on my switch, okay? Be a little more clear when we go into the configuration. Um, and we already talked about the, the RADSEC server must be configured as FPDN, okay? So let's, let's take a closer look at that. Let me go into ClearPass. So I'm in my ClearPass publisher. I'm going to go into the certificate store, and you, and you can use the same certificate um, on your publisher and your, your subscribers for, 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 for RADSEC. That's not a problem. So you can see the subject, the CN of my RADSEC server is this, OK? Again, this is what I must configure my RADSEC server to be on the switch, OK? Now, look who signed that. That's my good old Windows 2019 server. That's also the root as well. There's no intermediates in there. And my switch already trusts that. Why? Because I needed it for EST enrollment. So I'm kind of clear. I'm in the clear right now for, for my switch. He trusts the root that signed this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I, I configure the radius server as as this. Now, let's take um, a quick look in the trust list. So we already know that my switch um, trusts who signed the RADSEC server cert, right? But I need to make sure. Well. We already know, but we, we also need to take a look at the root CA of who signed my switch asserts, which is through pass onboard. But let's take a look at what we have. If we just look at subject contains clear pass. If you look, number two and number three are the ones that were created when we did our CA. Remember, I named it which is the CN, I named it ClearPass Demo EST, and then there's the ClearPass Demo EST signing cert as well. This guy right here, right, is the one we're gonna concentrate on. And if you look, he is not enabled from, a, from an EKU perspective for RADSEC, unless we click on this, go into usage and say, this is good for RADSEC, I update it and I close it. If that is not enabled, the RADSEC tunnels will not come up from any of your network devices, okay? That got certs from this guy anyway, all right? So that was our, our one task there, kind of check that off. I enabled RADSEC on our uh, demo CA um, or my, my EST CA. So he's he's good there. Now, since we're already in ClearPass, let's go in and configure um, my switch. Now, I already did it because... Um, and I, I didn't delete it and add it back in because I use this for TACX. I wouldn't be able to, it might be a pain to log into the switch. So what I would do is I would add a device, but you can see I named it. I put the IP address on it, right? So make sure you check your radius source, I, uh, source interface and whatnot to make sure you know, what IP address to put in there, okay? I enabled RADSEC and dynamic authorization. When you enable RADSEC, the radius, shared secret goes away. The, the secret is actually um, RADSEC, um, but it's not something you you change. So this is really all you have to do. Add it as a normal device as you always would. 
enable dynamic authorization if you like, and enable rad set. Once you're done, you do have some initial, oh, I'm sorry, additional settings that you could do. You can have ClearPass check some things in the certificate if you like, besides trust, validity period, and revocation, right? That's the only things it's gonna check if you don't have anything else. If you want, you can go and validate uh, the CN or SAN, or you can do um, some RFC compliant uh, with the um, who issued it, right? So we could scroll down and we could say, it's gotta be issued by this guy. It's gotta have that particular serial number. It's gotta have common name regex match and a subject alternate, alternate name regex. I don't think this is very commonly used because once you put once you put serial number in here, you're you're doing that for every single sol solitary device. But what some may do is is this option where you validate with the CN or SAN, and then what you can do is that you can you can match on a common name um, a regex on the common name. So if you name your switches something similar, like you know company XYZ dash switch dash IDF, blah, blah, blah. You can do a regex and, and make sure you, you match some of that, right? Make sure the, the CN contains, you know, company XYZ or something like that. So it's just a little bit of an additional check that you can put in there. Be aware if you do change anything in here, you have to check this box and it's going to reset your RADSEC ser uh, service, which is, means all your RADSEC sessions will um, reestablish. It's very quick though. All right, so we're going to cancel it. So that's done. Let's pretend we added that. All right, it's really all I have to do in 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 ClearPass. Let me jump over to the switch. Okay, I've logged in. Remember, I have my um, certificate here called EST Cert. Okay, so that's the one I'm going to use here. Now I'm going to basically paste in four commands, and I'm done. Okay. T. Okay, let's review these real quick. Telling the switch to use that certificate for RADSEC. Here's the here's the server I want to connect to, enabling COA, and that's the CO, one of the COA servers it can use. Okay, let's paste that in. Done. Do our good old write mem. And there's a command. It's actually an easy one. When we get to AOS 10 gateways, it's not so easy. It's a very long one. Radius server detail, connection established. Okay. We have clearpassmjglab.com, TLS connection established. It's good to go. You can use it for all your authentication needs. Go over to ClearPass, go into monitoring and event viewer. You'll see that that came up. So there he is right there. Okay. Good to go. Now you know you have a good connection for your for your port access, um, you know, authentication, authorization, um, and anything else you might want to use RADSEC for. Okay. Fairly, fairly straightforward. After this, we're going to look at doing um, clear path. Um, we're going to look at doing um, EST on a AOS 10 gateway and RADSEC. Okay, lastly, let's configure an AOS 10 gateway for EST and RADSEC. So let's go over the tasks um, on the gateway. And of course, since this is AOS 10, this is all done in Aruba Central. We're going to configure an EST profile. We're going to configure clock and DNS. We're going to configure a RADSEC server. Uh, on ClearPass, we're going to configure the gateway in the device list and enable RADSEC. And if uh, we had been using a different EST server, we would have to enable the RADSEC EKU in that root cert, but we're using the same one as, as we did in the switch, so that task's already been done. If you didn't watch that section and you need to learn how to do that, go back to the switch section and, uh, and have a look. Um, globally, we need to do something in Aruba Central, and that is load the CA certs. So when we're talking about Aruba Central managed devices, the CA certs, any cert, goes into a uh, global um, um, pool of certificates, and then they're able to be used um, in any configuration group in that tenant. So we'll do that as well. A couple helpful uh, commands. Um, I promise you a really long command to look at the RADSEC server status, and there it is. Um, we can also do some show crypto PKI commands to look at the um, the cert that was loaded from EST um, onto the gateway. We can also do show EST status as well. Okay, now off to configure 
the gateway. Okay, let's go ahead and configure um, EST and RADSEC on a gateway. First thing we're gonna do is make sure we go into organization in your central account so we can load the uh, CA certificate or certificates if you have more than one. So in it doesn't matter what group you're in, so don't worry about that. When you're in organization, it is global. So we're gonna go to certificates, and this is where we load certificates that can be used um, in any group in your tenant. So once they're in here, they're available for any group within your tenant. Now I already have my CA cert uh, loaded in this tenant, so I, I can't delete it and re-add it, but we'll show you exactly um, how to do this in for, for your uh, tenant. So we're gonna hit the plus sign. I'm just gonna give the um, certificate a friendly name and make sure you select CA certificate. So this is saying you are uploading a trusted CA certificate. Choose the right format, choose your file, hit add, as long as everything's okay from a format perspective, certificate will be uploaded and this name you will see um, will be available um, for, for CA certificate usage, okay? So pretend we did that. I'm gonna go ahead and go into my devices at this point. I'm gonna go into gateways. So I'm using group AOS 10 demo. First thing, let's check, make sure I have an NTP server configured at the group level, and I do. Let's make sure I got DNS configured correctly, and I do. I have a domain name in there, and I have a, a DNS server. Now, let's quickly just jump over to my gateway and do a show clock to make sure that's good. It is. Let's make sure I can ping my EST server. Oops. Yep, let's make sure I can ping my RADSEC server. And this is the VIP again for my ClickPass cluster. All good there. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to go into, I'm going to stay in system here and we go over to certificates. Now under here, you're going to see enrollment over secure transport. This is where we make the profile. So I'm going to go ahead and add plus. Now the format here, obviously, since it's a GUI, it's a little bit different, but um, if you remember in the switch section, we had we put the entire URL, so HTTPS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's not really an industry standard um, <clears throat> way of specifying your EST enrollment. Um, instead, usually you just say, what's the server and what is, and you fill out what's called these arbitrary labels. These arbitrary labels are simply the last bit of the URL um, of the enrollment URL. So I'll show you in a second. If you remember, if we go back to um, ClearPass uh, on board, we go into certificate authorities and we look at my CA here. This is the enrollment URL. This is the only bit you need when you do a gateway or even an AP if you get into it. Um, so we're just gonna take that. That's the arbitrary label bit that we need to know about. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into um, Central. I have that pasted or copied into my um, clipboard. And I'm gonna create a profile called EST enroll, dash enroll, server host. So I specify the, the host name only. I don't specify any HTTPS or anything like that. Challenge password. Uh, we leave out, that's if you're using a pre-shared, um, basically a pre-shared key. Arbitrary label, this is where I just put that CA5 bit and my uh, server CA cert name. So this is the EST, right? Um, CA that we need that was loaded in uh, under organization. You can leave organizational unit name empty. And in anywhere where it says arbitrary label, you put slash CA5. Now the username, we're going to use the same username that I used for the switch. You can make another username and password if you like. It's completely up to you. You can have one per group. You can have one per gateway if you want, if you want to do this at the gateway level. Um, and then we're going to hit save. Okay, now at this point, Central's going to push the configuration. You'll see that EST-enroll has been created and it's enabled. 
Now, if I go over to my gateway here and I do show EST and I can't question mark for my choices, right? So I can do status and I can do EST dash enroll. Okay, you can see enrollment is in progress at this point. This may take a minute, but we'll let this finish. We'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. I'm going to take a look at the EST process again. Um, look at EST status. We see that it, we are now enrolled and re enrollment is due next year, about um, three months ahead of um, right now. So um, if I do a show crypto DK uh, server cert, that will show the certificate um, of the actual. Um, that's assigned to the actual gateway. I can show the details by actually entering the name of the certificate. Notice that um, with a gateway, you you can't specify the name of the certificate like you could in um, in the switch. But you can see everything's enrolled and it's good to go. Now, what I can do is go ahead and have a look at um, creating a RADSEC server um, so we can. Um, um, use that certificate. So we'll go to uh, authentication servers and I'm going to go to all servers and I'm going to add one here and I set it to radius, but I flipped this switch over to secure radius. So that's going to make it rad second. I'm just going to put a common uh, friendly name in there for it. I'm going to use the host name of my VIP here. And then I'm going to say for my certificate, for the gateway certificate, use the one you got from the EST profile. And that EST profile is EST enrolled. So whatever certificate was um, um, generated uh, as part of this EST profile, that's the one you're gonna use for the client cert. And the trusted CA here is also win uh, 2019. So that's the root CA for the uh, ClearPass's RADSEC uh, server. Okay, I hit save on that. Clear pass, push that. And actually, if we look at this a little closer, um, if you click on it now, you're going to see a lot more options. So you're going to see some timeouts if you wanted to change the NAT ID or the NAS IP. You can do that here as well. Um, but um, uh, you know, the, if you need to change the RedSec port, which I doubt, you could change that here too. So a few more options after the fact. Um, are, are available. So now what we can do is go ahead and let's see if that radius server, I'm sorry, let's see if that RADSEC tunnel is up. Not yet. So I'm just going to give that a second. Be right back. So I had to do a little troubleshooting. I noticed my RADSEC server was not coming up. So I took a look. Um, at the RADSEC status and notice nothing was coming up. So I did a little troubleshooting. This is actually a good thing. What I did was I went into ClearPass and monitoring an event viewer. And I noticed I was getting these errors that my gateway 192.168.90.4 couldn't connect. And I also saw these unable to get issuer cert errors. Now, that's kind of interesting because onboard is my issuer. So how could it not know who the issuer was? Well, I took a look at this and I noticed that it says there is no certificate. The issuer's certificate is not installed or activated. Now, if you take a look at this, the issuer is ClearPass Demo EST signing. Now, I did not during the switch configuration for this enable the EKU for the signing um, certificate that was installed on ClearPass. I only did the non-signing one. So let's see what happens if I go ahead and enable the RADSEC EKU for that guy. So if I go into my trust list, I already found, I already have the uh, filter on here. So I'm going to go into signing. You'll see the non-signing one has rad second enabled, but the signing one does not. So let's see what happens. Let's 
do that. We'll go into monitoring, event viewer, and we will give it a second to retry here. Okay, so now we see after a few seconds, the client is up. We look on the gateway, it is connected and ready to go. Okay, so kind of a lesson learned there. When, you, when you're doing this, make sure both of those um, certificates have RADSEC EKU enabled. For some reason, the switch didn't need it, um, but um, the when the gateway was con uh, connecting, it did. So this concludes um, our discussion of EST and how to configure EST and RADSEC on an Aruba switch, CX switch, and an Aruba AOS 10 gateway. Hope you enjoyed it.